keeps going into voicemail, but I have spoken to the agent and she's apologised and is going to try and get him for me. So what I'm going to do is I was going to play their new um, track, So Happy, at the end of the interview. So if I play it now, then that gives you a chance to hear it and gives us a few minutes to try and get them on the line. I see you hand in hand with that guy You said you hit it well Well isn't that nice Well I wave as you pass by And I fake a stupid smile Well I'm just wanting to die the latest single from Blake, So Happy. We couldn't get Stephen Bowman, but we have got Ollie Baines on the line. Welcome to the show, Ollie. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Yeah, a bit of a surprise for you, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> well, well, these, things, these things happen. <laughs> they do, absolutely. <laughs> well, you are um, one of the four, I believe, in the group. That's right, yeah, yeah. One of, one of the original four. We're now, of course, uh, a three. Um, but uh, having, having Jules Knight, who has just uh, left and gone into Holby City. Yes, so um, I read he's gone to be a doctor, he, hasn't he? That's right, he's gone to be a doctor. We have to point out to our fans that Holby City isn't a real hospital. He's <laughs> not uh, a real doctor. A, no, well, we had a fan the other day who came up at the end of a concert and said, oh, I'm not surprised about Jules going off to be a doctor. He was such a caring person. <laughs> and we sort of thought, no, dear, well, never mind. But, uh, but oh. you know, he's gone off to do that. So the three of us, <laughs> three of us remain, myself, Stephen and, and Humph. Brilliant. Okay. Now I've been listening to some of your later music. I remember you from from when you started, which I was I believe was back in two thousand and seven. But That's it's right. definitely got more of a pop feel now. <laughs> well, this right? album, 
Yeah, this album certainly does. I think, you know, it's a combination of things. One is that we, we've always been a, a group that have mixed the classical and the pop stuff. I mean, certainly our first album was uh, was a classical album, but that's the way it was marketed. Uh, sadly, the only thing is that these days you have to put certain records into a certain box, and if you want to get, you know, played on the radio, you have to show, you know, sometimes one one side of the coin. Mm. Uh, I what I always stress is that whenever we're doing things in concerts, we're mixing it up a lot more. With we, you know, we're still very much the same group we've always been. Uh, giving a lot of you know a harmony vocal approach to all songs, so, and that means that we can we can approach lots of different music, be it sort of big, static classical stuff that's very good for for you know live events and national events that we do a lot of, or whether it's um, you know pop things that, that can be that can actually be played on the radio. Um, yeah. can expect, you, know, you can stretch our audience because you know you always want to be stretching your audience and, and going out to new people all over the world. Yes, you need to be diverse, don't you? That's quite right. Yeah, you do. You've got to do. You've got to be diverse and, uh, and stay alive in the game. Uh, yeah. That's why we've managed to survive for, for over six years. So, who would you say not not on the classical side? Who would you say um, we, your musical inspirations now, as far as sort of more <laughs> pop things? Are well, concerned? I think certainly for, for the for the new album, which is I might add almost entirely original. There are four, three or four covers on there, um, but the rest, you know, about, about, about ten original tracks, which is a complete opposite to what we've normally done, which is, you know, normally to put, um, you know, uh, about ten covers on a, on, a, on an album and then a couple of, of new releases that people haven't heard. Mm. And that's always been purely because our audience are familiar with certain songs and they come and they want to hear us sing music that they know. Uh, you know, it's like every band who suddenly says, oh, we're not going to play something from our new album. And everybody in the audience goes, oh, no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we've got to sit through this. Play a hit, damn it. Uh, so uh, we, we, we try and give them a bit of that. But I think for, for the new album, certainly, we, we've got some older influences. Um, there's a lot of sort of Beach Boys kind of harmony. We've always had that, I think. And we've even covered one or two Beach Boys tracks before. We, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of that particular band myself and, and what they did for bringing you know, Western harmony back into pop music in the in the late 60s. Uh, and the influence they had on other British bands, like the Beatles, of course. Um, there's also, you would notice on this new album, on Start Over, you would notice a sort of Bee Gees kind of sound. Mm. Uh, and that, again, is us sort of experimenting with the fact that, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of pop singers in this country are, are fans of the sort of... Um, uh, gripped singing kind of approach where it's quite sort of edgy and throaty and quite folky, which gives a lot of passion. Um, but also, you're missing out on the fact that the human voice is capable of, you know, amazingly sort of like soft, floated sounds. Uh, and, uh, and the Bee Gees used to do this uh, a lot, if you can sort of cast your mind to sort of, you know, how do you mend a broken heart, things like that, where they have this very close harmony but it's all sort of sung in falsetto. Yes. Um, yeah. And it can be really, really effective. So we've we've experimented with that as well. And I think so. There's, there's, all, there's a mix of different different styles and, 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 and influences in there. Yeah. This is your fourth um, album. Did you say it was called Start Over? The album's called Start Over, yeah. Okay. Uh, which is uh, ironic, really. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Left and, and there we go. <laughs> so uh, will so, you be yeah. looking for a fourth person or are you going to stick to three we, now? No, we're going to stick to three now. We looked for a while and um, we found some awesome people. Um, but what we realised is that the fans were were actually a bit, you know, you know, they sort of felt they'd known us for six years, and suddenly we were forced to do a, a, a number of concerts at the beginning of the year with three of us, uh, which of course took a lot of work to rearrange everything in time for that. And, and actually, we found that it worked really well, and everybody was very um, very receptive to it. And and I think also there, there is something about having three on stage rather than four, whereby you can you can pick individual characters a bit better. Uh, so the show has become actually very more fluid, uh, and you know it's a, it's a lot easier to move a tripod than a table. You put, it, <laughs> put it that way. Yes, I see um, what you're saying. And so so it's actually it's, it's nice because it's rather than having to sort of train somebody up, it's actually made us up our game, mm. uh, and and to have to do more individually as well within the, within the the different songs that we sing yeah the original songs apparently there are 10 originals on the album and i think some were written by diane warren yes amazing yeah, Brilliant. i know great great american songwriter yeah. um she has written written several of the songs on the album uh and again that's that's another influence if you i mean her sort of style has mostly been um 
sort of boys to men, you know, American hits like that. Uh, and there is that you can you can you can hear that sort of uh, approach certainly in the songwriting. Um, whether or not you hear it in in our delivery, that's up to the that's up to the individual <laughs> listener. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the covers you've got is one of my favourites, Desperado by the Eagles. Oh yeah, well every man in his book discovered that, of course. But, yes. uh, we just thought we'd throw us in the mix. Uh, no, no, I'm joking, of course. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a fantastic song. Uh, it's one of my favourites. I particularly like the way that uh, things Don Henley sings it from the drum kit. Uh, yeah. Before Ben playing, and it's it's uh, it really is amazing. You don't get that many drummers that that, that sing the lead, so it's, it's quite quite fun to have that. But um, we always do that. We do that in in concert. We tend to do it just almost a cappella, and then we just bring in a piano, live piano on stage, mm. uh, and it's very effective, very very ethereal and and, and beautiful and, and lyrical. Yeah. Uh, and the and the one we've got on the album again is this real sort of studio session. Um, version where we've we've really multi-layered the vocals so you get this real sense of of sort of you know wonder and i think that's what the song's really about yeah i i do too as well yeah and you you feel my love by bob dylan which obviously was recently performed by adele that's it yeah um, make you feel my love yeah beautiful night by paul mccartney i can't think which one that is ah uh, no and a lot of people don't know this song but mm. uh this i think is one of my favorite new bits of music um it's it's off a Paul McCartney album shortly after the Beatles had finished. Um, originally recorded in the 70s, and then I think, or, or very early 80s perhaps, and then re-released, I think, in the mid to late 90s on the death of Linda McCartney. So yeah. that would be about 96. But it really is one of the last incarnations of the Beatles, incarnations rather, because although it's a Paul McCartney track, uh, Ringo played session drums, uh, George Harrison played session guitar, and, uh, and in fact, um, George Martin produced it. So it really is, uh, albeit for, for the lack of John Lennon, uh, very much uh, almost a Beatles track. Yeah. And there's something about covering Beatles tracks, which is always, you know, you, you don't sort of touch them because they're too sacred. <laughs> so it was a real find for us to, to find this song uh, that's, that's really a Paul McCartney song and, and to be able to, to do something with it because it's lovely. I wish more people knew it. Uh, especially the original, but I think we've done a, a, a really, really lovely version. It's, again, it just has this wonderful, wonderful tune, and it's a really fun song. And where did you where did you record? Which studios did you record um, this that last most, album? Most of this was recorded down in Real World Studios, which is Peter Gabriel's from, from uh, down in Box, uh, down in in sort of Wiltshire. Mm. Near, near Bath, and um, it's uh, and it's a beautiful place, an incredible sort of great bunker hidden by a lake in the in the in the sort of um sunset countryside and it's uh it, it, it's a real place to sort of go and sort of sit and um become really involved in making a record um so that that was lovely but it's taken us gosh it took two years really to make this because we kept going back and and fiddling uh, and changing <laughs> things and getting very you know different versions of every song for instance the song of so happy you've just heard is that i presume it's going to be the, the the radio single version you know there's another different version on the uh on the album there's about three other ones and we you know, it, it always happens once you start putting lots of input you know different people's input too many chefs Yes, uh, exactly. You end, up, you end up not necessarily spoiling the broth, but having a lot of different broths, <laughs> shall I say. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's very much, it's, it's sort of, um, you know, one man's poison, you know, in terms of who likes what. Uh, so we all have, you know, nice friendly arguments about which one we <laughs> Debates. And which one's gonna, yeah, so, so in, this, in this sense, one has very typically ended up as a radio single and one has ended up on the album. Uh, I'm not sure which one we had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate, but only like you got the radio one because it's quite fun and upbeat. It was very good. It was, was very, <laughs> fun, very fun and upbeat, very poppy. And what about touring? Are you touring at the moment? Can we come and see we you? We have been on tour since, as far as I can tell, about 1866. <laughs> because um, I, well, currently, in fact, I am down at home in Wiltshire in a beautiful English country garden looking at the swallows and somebody's put a croquet lawn up so it's all feeling pretty patriotic right now 
but this is about the first time in uh, in several months I've been able to able to do that. Um, normally we are, you know, in a in a hotel somewhere up north or in the Philippines or wherever it may be. I mean, we have the most extraordinary life that goes from yeah, I'm sure. real real glamour. Ollie, I'm suddenly... so sorry to interrupt you. We've got literally a couple of seconds left. Thank Wonderful. you so much for joining us today. You're very kind. Bye, Ollie. Your voice in Spain.